name is Carolyn Ellis. Today I'm going to take you on a tour of the historic California Mission Santa Clara de Asis. As we explore this one time Spanish colony, I plan to share with you its historical past and details about its colorful present. Santa Clara de Asis was founded on January 12, 1777 by the Catholic priest Father Junipero Serra. Junipero was the religious leader of the Spanish expedition to colonize California and convert California Indians to the Catholic faith. He founded nine of the 21 California missions, including the mission Santa Clara de Asis. The first mission named after a female saint. Saint Clara of Assisi was born in Assisi, Italy in the year 1193. She was a very special nun. She once saved her church from enemy soldiers by praying for God's protection. Mission Santa Clara is located in present-day Santa Clara, California, about 50 miles north of Hollister. It is near the Guadalupe River and surrounded by fertile valleys. The layout of the mission is a quadrangle. This means it is rectangular in shape. The walls are beige and the roof is reddish-brown like most missions. Mission Santa Clara de Asis has been destroyed and rebuilt several times. This is what's left of the original Adobe Lodge. This is what real Adobe looks like. It's made of clay, straw, and mud. Let's take a look around. As you can see, this place is really big. This is the front. Inside, the mission had lots of religious art on the walls and ceiling. My favorite is this painting next to the entrance. It's very colorful, don't you think? As you can see, the mission church is beautiful. There is art everywhere you look, from floor to ceiling.
a big part of life at the mission. Missionaries strongly believed in the Catholic religion and wanted to share their belief with everyone. Being a Catholic was very was a very strict lifestyle. People went to church regularly and had to follow the rules of the church just like the rules of a government. This is a church service in progress. Let's have a listen. And it is sponsors example a movement of church leaders has spread with the African nation, which has successfully introduced forgiveness based reconciliation. And so today, and this Eucharist, let us pray for this place. That we become messengers of reconciliation, especially in this year of mercy. It can be fun at the Mission Santa Clara too. My brother thought it was funny to photobomb me while we shot this video. See if you can find him. such as corn and grain. From 1782 to 1832, the mission's people harvested about 118,000 bushels of grain and produce. They were so good at growing food that they often gave it away to other missions that weren't as fortunate. The workers also raised livestock, including cattle, sheep, pigs, horses, and mules. With more than 20,000 animals, the mission had the second largest livestock herd among the northern missions. work never would have been possible without the Indian people. They were made to work in the crop fields and helped raise the livestock. They helped build parts of the mission and helped to rebuild when parts of the mission were destroyed. The native tribe that lived there were called the Ohlone tribe. The Ohlone were not allowed to worship their own religion. Instead, missionaries taught the Indians about the Catholic religion, whether they wanted to learn or not. The Ohlone lived in the Santa Clara Valley long before the mission was built. Ancestors of the Ohlone people settled in the Santa Clara Valley at least 7,000 years ago. The Ohlone gathered wild plants, hunted, and fished. 
After the Spanish established the mission, the Ohlone's lives changed forever. Before the arrival of the Spanish, the Ohlone built and lived in Tule Reed houses. At the mission, they built and lived in adobe structures of Spanish design. They ate Spanish food, worked the fields of the mission, tended herds of sheep and cattle, worked in the mission kitchens, and made pottery, tanned leather, and wove cloth. In the 18th century, the Spanish missionaries considered it their religious duty to bring as many native people as possible to the virtues of Catholicism. This duty led to tragedy for the Ohlone people. Life was harsh for them. Non-Spanish visitors compared the mission's treatment of the natives to slave plantations. Once baptized, the Ohlone's made to work as farm hands and forced to attend church. In the short time of its 65 years, the mission operated. There were 81,000 natives baptized and forced to work. But because of European diseases like smallpox and measles, as well as bad diets and poor working, and living conditions, 60,000 of those natives died as, at the missions. Many were Ohlone people. Today, the Mission Santa Clara is surrounded by the beautiful Santa Clara University. The university keeps the mission and Ohlone people's spirit alive by caring for what remains of the mission and by sharing the history of the Ohlone's experience. I want to thank you for joining me on this tour. I hope you learned as much as I did and that someday you will visit the beautiful and historic Mission Santa Clara Diocese.